Hey everybody, it's Phil from Cleveland Moto and I have got a brand new bike for you. This is the Genuine Scooter Company's Rattler 200i. Now you guys might remember the old Rattler 110, that was a two-stroke. This is a four-stroke, it's a 200cc. I gotta say, I just took it out for a spin. Now it's not broken in yet, so we don't know exactly what the top speed is. But I had it going an indicated 71 miles per hour just now, and it's a hell of a lot of fun. Really cool looking bike. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the quirks and features of it as we go through this video, introducing you to the genuine scooter company, Rattler 200i. So let's just hop on real quick. Um, we're going to notice, you know, I call this the Kimco style keys because it has the trap door that you can close the cover over the uh, keyhole. And uh, so I just, I call them the Kimco style keys. Now, of course, if you push the key in and turn it to the left, it will open the seat. And the underseat storage on this is pretty much what you'd expect from uh, any normal smaller size scooter. Uh, just to kind of show you, I've got my full size backpack in there. I did squeeze a helmet in earlier. It's not there's not a lot of room for a full face, but it does manage to get in there. Typical traditional gas can. Uh, it took about 1.25 gallons on its first fill. So turn the key on. And look at that, LCD display, um, AM, PM clock, which is nice, odometers, very clear, very easy to read, gas gauge, very clear, very easy to read, tax right across the top, very simple, very clear, not a lot of questions on this one. There is a USB port right down here, so there's a USB port to plug in your phone, and there is a slot that just coincidentally my phone slides right into, just the tip of it hangs out, so it's easy to get out. I don't know if I'd call it secure, like it's going to... Sur uh, survive any big bumps so let's go out and fire it up okay uh, we'll talk about the lighting as we go on our trip but high beam low beam turn signal left right and cancel horns here uh, kill switch on the right four-way flashers electric starter okay uh, the flash to pass on this is built into the highly high bo uh, high low switch and uh, you know the stylish mirrors nothing wrong with those and the mirrors seem to be located pretty well. We can uh, get a good view behind us without too much sight of our elbows. Okay. So, decent sound. Sounds fine. Nothing, nothing special about it. Uh, acceleration seems to be on par with what we'd expect. You know, 150 cc to... Uh, 200 cc's. Now, this is, uh, I believe, 170 odd cc's. Uh, you know, it's one of those things that's not a true 200 cc motor. Uh, couldn't find any specifications online whether it was a two valve or a four valve motor. Uh, if you told me it was two valve, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, it doesn't feel like, you know, it's not a 200 cc rocket ship. We're not talking about something that's, you know, uh, Jalera runner or you know dragster style performance here it does seem to be a you know good decent commuter scooter I do like the styling on it though I really do I, I have to say that I really like the plastics I think that the bodywork is very well thought out and it does not look like any other scooter out there so there's a lot of this uh, faux carbon fiber that's stamped into the plastic on the uh, black parts. So there's this faux carbon fiber, what looks like these fake vents over here. Um, there's a lot of that going on. The battery on this bike is located underneath your feet. And this does run on a standard YTX uh, 7 battery. And this is a bike that does not have ABS brakes. So this is a standard... Uh, you know, standard brakes, front and rear. Speaking to that, it does have the Kenda, uh, not open block, but they're sort of an adventure style tire that's been around for quite a while. You see them on a lot of the bikes, like the Zumas and stuff like that. Okay, we're talking about this road. This road is a tragedy. Um, this is a rough, rough road here in Cleveland. It's one of the worst. And uh, this one is always one of my favorite places to go and see how a suspension feels on a bike. And what I can tell you is the suspension on this bike is harsh. Um, it is not sitting there and it's not just, you know, absorbing all these bumps. Uh, they're all being transmitted to me. 
And I'm not a little dainty flower. I'm, you know, 210 pounds, six foot one. So with uh, that being said, the suspension is a little on the harsh side. You know, it's not a, it's not a real light, uh, light bike to ride. It does kind of beach up a tiny bit. Now, that's going to talk about the, the obvious thing is this bike is very affordable at only $27.99 plus associated fees. Keep in mind, they are going to start charging a tariff. Uh, these Chinese vehicles that are imported, you will start seeing dealers with tariffs on those. And you also may see a surcharge for ocean freight because I can tell you those expenses are being passed on to the dealer. So expect to see that. Uh, you're not going to get away with not paying that. That, that will be reflected in your invoice. Yeah, very nice driving bike. Uh, certainly holds its line just fine. There's no oscillation. The bike doesn't want to, you know, pivot, duck, or dive. Hands off the bars. It's very, very stable. Overall, very, very happy with this bike. Uh, now, let's talk about the bad stuff. The one thing that could cause people to not buy this bike is for some strange reason they have decided to put a hockey puck in the seat or literally bolted through the seat between where the driver would be and the passenger would be. Now first things first, as a person that's over six foot tall with long legs, 34 inch inseam, I do like kind of sliding back on the seat. I really enjoy being able to kind of scooch back a little bit, give myself some more leg room. That is impossible with this because that bump that they put in, and it doesn't need to be there. They actually had to put holes in the seat to put this device on. It's a terrible idea, and I wish it was gone. And what I will probably do is I will probably have one on my floor where we take that stop off, that bump stop, we we'll take it off, and we'll put something adhesive to cover the two holes in the vinyl where it used to go through and be secured because I think it's an absolute turnoff. Um, we had the guys from the podcast last night come out, so eight different people rode this bike last night, and all eight of them, and we're talking people from five foot four or five foot six up to six foot two, six foot three, they all said the same thing that bum stop, that hockey puck's got to go. And it's not soft and yielding, it's, it's literally, it feels just like a hockey puck. Uh, not fun for anybody as far as I'm concerned. So just to be aware of it, not a great thing. Uh, genuine would do well to get rid of that and give us a smooth seat cover as soon as possible. Now we're going to pull up here and we're going to talk about the brakes. So again, this is 12 inch wheel bike, you know, plenty of, plenty of motor for running around town. And we're going to go ahead and do a brake check right now. You could hear the back end got a little fishy, sliding around a little bit. Um, yeah, this bike as soon as you get into the brakes, that back end is going to let go on you. Um, these tires in particular, I, you know, with that sort of off-road style tread, they're going to uh, really, this bike would really benefit for some uh, ABS. It would help it a lot. But, you know, alas, it does not have it. And here we are. So, now in the light, you know, it's a really, really good looking bike. I love the front end. I think the front end that they did to it is fantastic. We're going to talk a little bit about the lighting coming up real quick. The turn signals that you see are the American DOT turn signals up there at the top. Um, these LEDs, these cool LEDs down low, non-functioning. Probably going to figure that out later. Same thing on the back. Very bright, very good lighting on the back. DOT turn signals, but check these guys out. Super cool. So I want to see what those look like when they're working. We talked about the Kenda, sort of the ADV style tread. Again, you just heard me, the back end, the back brake locks up. It's a good disc brake back there, a nice big disc brake, but it has a bit of a heavy rear brake bias on this bike. So um, if you're not real, real good on the brakes, you may be locking up that back. That's what I'm talking about right there. That thing's got to go. Okay, now we're talking about the lighting. So this bike has got a very, very interesting and very good headlight system in it. It 
lets you see in the dark. I mean, last night driving home, very late at night, uh, a lot of the bikes that have the projector beam style lights, you know, they'll have like a projector beam and they'll be backed up by some halogens or they'll have, uh, you know, a combination of projector beam and LED. So the light last night, I was very impressed by how good of a light pattern this thing throws on the road at night, even in low beam. And high beam is positively spectacular. So the low beam is really good. It throws a nice blast of light a couple of 300 feet out in front of you, and it's excellent. I was very impressed, even at you know freeway speeds last night, how good that lighting is. It's just excellent. So really, really cool. Um, I got to give them huge thumbs up for that lighting. Choosing that lighting really, really makes the bike fun to drive in dark conditions. It's really nice. Uh, let, we're going to go ahead and we're going to come into this uh, little wooded area here. It's safe for me to do a brake check again. You guys paying attention. I always like to do brake checks on scooters at about 40 miles per hour. It really tells you a lot. That's the speed a lot of us find ourselves at. So if we had an emergency and we had to brake check at 40, that's something we'd be doing. And that seems to be a real good, you know, real good opportunity to test out the braking of the bike. Okay. So... I didn't go with the front brake as hard as I could have, and I tried to modulate the rear brake a lot more to see if I could keep that rear brake skid or that rear, that rear howl at bay. So really, um, I'm not new to riding motorcycles. I've been doing it for a really long time, and I'll be the first to tell you that this bike... Okay, that was, that was threshold braking right there. I had the front wheel skidding, um, and... That's about as good as you're going to get out of this. So just be advised, this is a bike that, you know, if you don't want that rear wheel to lock up, you know, having disc brakes on the back, I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's such a selling point to have disc brakes on the back of the bike. No, it's not, man. Uh, and this, this is a great example of that. This bike, giving even hand pressure across the front and the rear brake, you're going to lock the rear brake up every time. To make that stop, uh, even getting the front wheel to skid a little bit, maximum energy in the front wheel, to make that stop, I was probably 95% front brake, 5% rear to keep that rear. And that's a lot of math to do. That's a lot of juggling to do when you're in the middle of a panic stop and it's just like, oh boy, what are we going to do? So yeah, that's just something to be aware of. And it's the brakes are great. I mean, they give you, <laughs> there's plenty of stopping power as far as the ability to stop the wheel in motion. That's happening, and it's happening well. But I do caution that that might be, a, that might be something for a new rider that you might want to be aware of. Now, for me, I'm just fine with, you know, standard brakes. I don't particularly feel like I need ABS. Sometimes the ABS gets involved and a little too aggressively, a little more than I would like. Yeah, that's pretty rough, you know. Um, I'm hitting those bumps pretty much full on. And uh, it's, I'm feeling all of it, you know, so it's, it's not a soft suspension by any standards. It's not supple. It's pretty, uh, now, the good news is I'm not bottoming it out, you know. My weight on this bike isn't crushing it and just bouncing it off the stops. But I, do, I am spending quite a bit of time with my tires bouncing off. And I did do factory, you know, air pressure on these. So I don't know if it's a tire choice thing or if it's a, uh, a suspension hardness thing. So that's what that's all about full launch from a stop like we said not the fastest bike we've ridden but but real good you know it's absolutely all that you'd need in town and the question is we're gonna have to do some speedometer testing and find out what 71 miles per hour indicated actually is you know with when we talk about genuine's other products like the buddy 125 the buddy 170 the buddy 125 kick you know, those three bikes, we've kind of grown to acknowledge that there's a speedometer discrepancy there. And they're all great bikes, but we just know that when the speedometer says you're going 70, 60 is probably more of a reality. Now, I don't think there's any chance that this bike is made by the same company that makes the Buddy 125, the Buddy 170, or the Buddy Kick. This, this is a mainland China product right here. So I don't know what the speedometer accuracy is going to be. I don't want to hold it up 
And at some point, I'd like to do a shootout between this and Genuine's other product, the Hooligan, which is spiritually very similar to this, even though it's about a thousand dollars difference in price, or, or give or take. So, yeah, I'm gonna would like to shoot that out as well. And maybe because of those tariffs, the Hooligan's not so much more expensive than this bike. So. That is the end of our test ride today. I hope you guys had a great time. If you have any more questions about it, contact us at clevelandmoto.com or send me an email. That's phil at clevelandmoto.com. And as we say here at Cleveland Moto, remember to ride fast and take chances.